welcome to Thursday. And, well, yes, it is Thursday. I've lost track of time this week. Um, so today is Battle of the Debuts, where we take two bands of similar genre, look at their debut albums, and see which one was the better, basically. And today we're going to do some 1980s. Um, we're going back to new, the start of New Wave. So today we're going to look at the debut albums of Spandau Ballet and Duran Duran. Been around a long time, split up, reformed. And no, they really um, stood the test of time, I think. Um, both part of that second British invasion of America as well. Uh, they've really done well. So, we'll have a look at Spandau Ballet first, as they release their album first. Um, Spandau Ballet were formed in Islington in 1979, become one of the most successful new romantic groups, and they sold 25 million albums, 23 singles worldwide, and they've had 8 UK top 10 albums, which is pretty cool. Um, Spando Bally, of course, the classic lineup is Tony Hadley on the vocals and synthesizers, Gary Kemp synthesizers, guitars, Steve Norman guitars, Martin Kemp bass, and John Keeble on the drums. I've actually seen a band in a pub with John Keeble on drums. Yes. So, a debut album Journeys to Glory. Uh, released on the 6th of March 1981 by Chrysalis Records produced by Richard James Burgess and written by, songs were written by Gary Kemp so first track on this debut album for them is the classic to cut a long story short when I first heard this, I thought this is pretty good. I like, I, I love the tune. I've always liked that one. Um, I don't know why. It's just one of them songs. Um, then we get a track called Reformation. This is very new wave, early eighties pop. Um, I've got no problem with this. I've got no problem with new wave music. Um, some of, well, some of it I liked and I do quite like this track it's really good and then we get Mandolin that's some pretty good guitar work on here um, I mean Gary Kemp and Steve Norman good guitarists I mean Gary Kemp is I mean he's playing in um, Nick Mason's Source of Secrets at the moment and you know his guitar work in that is really good you've got a great um, bass line from Martin Kemp pretty good then we get another single from the album Muscle Bound which I found always found a little bit cheesy that's not for me um, Age of Blows nice guitar work here again from Steve I think it's a mixture of Steve Norman and Gary Kemp but John Keeble's drumming is pretty awesome in this uh, pretty good drummer is John Keeble Next track is The Freeze. It's one of them songs from that time. Um, this is one that hasn't really aged well, but it's, you know, it's a sound that you get from Spandau Ballet and Big Country and all the bands and that sort of era. Um, great bass line from Gary Kemp, from Martin Kemp, sorry. Great bass line, excellent. Then we get confused. It's all right. One of the weaker tracks on the album. Then we get the one, my favourite track on this album. I mean, I've not, I haven't listened to this album ever, <laughs> to be quite honest. Um, so when I listened to this, when I got to this track, boys, I thought, wow, this is really good. Uh, it's got a little bit of prog in there bit of psychedelia ish it's a really strong track really like that one 
Okay, as I said, I've not I've not listened to this ever in my life. So I've listened to this now about four times. And I think, given the time, given the day and all that, it was a very good debut album. I've got some interesting tracks on here. I mean, I, th I think they're very pretty good musicians and they went on to do, you know, a make bigger things. But... Um, Again, I think, you know, back in 1981, I was listening to more Iron Maiden and Motorhead and all that, you know, Saxon. But I think as you get older, you sort of um, appreciate other music from the time. And I do appreciate this album. Um, I think they were still experimenting. They weren't quite sure where they were going. But on the whole, I think it was a very good, solid start for them. Um, what do the, uh, the old critics think? Well, the album did get mixed reviews at the time. Now, in his autobiography, Tony Hadley noted that the critic in Melimator, Melody Maker dismissed us as nothing more than a bunch of fancy rags without a peg pack to hang them on. I think that's a bit harsh. The album, he hasn't said who wrote this, represented superficial music for the superficial people. And the New Musical Express called it an awfully ordinary record. Journey to Glory is unremarkable fare by any standards. Not bad, but modest. And Robert Christogal labelled it must avoid it. Billboard retailers recommended it. So I did yeah, so we'll have a look at the um, stars. All music gave it one in a bit. Record Mirror give it three. The Rolling Stone album guide one and a bit. Smash Hip seven out of ten. Sounds give it five stars. Village P Voice gave it C. I mean the charts. I mean it got to number five in the UK, so it couldn't have been that bad. You critics. Um, Australia number fourteen. Number twelve in New Aust New Zealand. Australia fourteen. But it got, it made, I mean, it got a gold record, so not bad. Okay, then let's have a look at the nuts and bolts of this one. Um, the song quality on this, Gary Kemp is a really good songwriter, um, without a doubt. So I'm going to give it five out of five. Production, very well produced. Um, definitely the sound of the early 1980s but it's for the time it is really good so I'm going to give it 4 out of 5 reception regardless of what the critics thought because they never get it right do they really I mean they've, they've slated off some great albums in you know all over the genres but the fans liked it you know their song you know the Cut a, cut a long story short, it was a big single, so was Muscle Bound, even though I don't like it, it was very popular. And the album got to number five, so I'm going to give it a four out of five for reception. Cover design, it's not very interesting, is it? Um, not, you know, it's not going to sell, is it, with a plain cover like that? It needs it a little bit more bolder, and I can only give that a two out of five. So, the total for Spandau Ballet's Journeys to Glory is 15 out of 20. Not a bad score. Okay then, let's bring on the next contestant. And that is, of course, Duran Duran. And their self-titled debut album, Duran Duran. Uh, Duran Duran were formed in Birmingham in 1978 by keyboardist. Nick Rhodes and bass player John Taylor. They added Roger Taylor, another Roger Taylor, which was very confusing at the time, having two Roger Taylors that played drums. And then they brought in Andy Taylor and Simon Le Bon in 1980. Uh, they were a part of that new romantic scene. Uh, when the MTV was coming in, they were one of the leading bands on that. And again, they had a very 
successful career. They even got to record a Bond theme. Due to the kill, so they have had a pretty good um, career. So Duran Duran debuted in 1981 on the 15th of June, released by EMI. And the band, of course, is Simon Le Bon on lead vocals, Andy Taylor on the guitars, John Taylor on the bass guitar, Roger Taylor, lots of Taylors in this band on drums, Nick Rhodes on the keyboards and synthesizers, and it was produced by Colin Thurston. First track on here, Girls on Film. Perhaps one of the most iconic songs from 19, the 1980s. I like Andy Taylor's guitar work. I think Andy Taylor is a terrific guitar player. Um, you would remember when he was in the Power Station. Great guitar work. Um, Roger Taylor's drumming is good. I mean, this is Roger, Roger Taylor from Duran Duran. is a good drummer as well. Keeps a good beat. It's a really good track. Um, second track on here again. Another big single, um, Planet Earth. Catchy tune. Great vocals from Simon Le Bon. Um, the keyboard work from Nick Rhodes is terrific on this. I think this was their debut single, and you know, it, big impact on everybody, even for us rockers. We thought, oh, this is a bit different. Anybody out there? Another solid track. Um, love John Taylor's bass line on this. I know a little bit more about this album because I think one of my someone that I, I can't remember if it was a friend, sister, or someone in the family liked this album and I heard it quite a lot. So I've had a little bit more on this album. So I do like that track. I love John Taylor's bass line. To the Shore. I do like Nick Rhodes' keyboards in this. The intro is pretty good. I like that. It reminds me of Sparks. That track. Very Sparks sort of feel to it. And then we got Careless Memories. This is where Andy Taylor shows his uh, credentials as a. Sorry, I can't pronounce words. You know how things are these days. Um, Andy Taylor. Great guitar work on it. He just shows it in some really good keyboards from Nick Rhodes. Night Boat, again one of these typical songs from 1980, uh, sounds well for the time, um, doesn't sound so good now, you know, it just sounds very dated, but if you've got to remember from 1981 it was different and a unique sound. Then we get my favourite track on the album, Sound of Thunder. Roger's drumming in this is changes, it sort of really good drummer and he sort of the tempo changes in this um great guitar work from andy taylor it's a really good track i like that one friends of mine mm, not very good so just that horrible 80s sort of sound you know they're experimenting but this has got a good bass line from john and then we get the last track, Tel Aviv. Another really good track. Um, some great keyboards. Got some weird and wonderful effects on it. And it's really good. Um, this album, I always thought Andy Taylor was in the wrong band. Because he should have been into rock bands more than pop bands. He's a great guitar player. Um, um, I think he's... I think he likes his rock music. I mean, me went on to do the Power Station, of course. Um, I think this is a really good album. It's got little tinges of rock, um, but the musicianship of this band is terrific. I mean, they went on to make some really good records, um, even as a headbanger in the day. Didn't mind a bit of Duran Duran because I thought they had a solid sound. Okay, it was. He didn't sort of miss it in the day, but you know, when I listen to them now, I've got no problems with Duran Duran. I've never had really problems with 
Duran Duran, you know, they wrote some really good pop songs. I think one of these days I will do a retro ranking on um, Duran Duran because I think they're worthy of it. Okay, what did the crickets critics sing? Well, I couldn't find much, to be quite honest. I researched and searched, but I did find one called Drew's Reviews. And in, the, and in this they said, right away, you know, a new decade in music has begun. Girls on Films opens with the Hallmark camera shutter. Um, Planet Earth, this is a wealth crafted song with a stellar bass line, I agree. And it said, Duran Duran's first album already sounds like a veteran band with multiple releases in the discography. Though the kids of the day probably had no comprehension of this. Duran Duran not only nails it, not only nails it on their first release, but managed to prevent the proverbial flash in the pan, which I totally agree with. They, they it's very consistent. But I did find some uh, the usual stars. Um, All Music gave it four stars. Encyclopedia of Popular Music gave it three. Record Mirror gave it four. The Rolling Stone Album Guide gave it four. My God. Spin Alternative Record Guide gave it an eight out of ten. Did did a lot of in the charts. Got to number three in the album charts in the England, UK. Sorry, US Billboard number ten and the US Rock Albums twenty four. Picked up a few discs, of course. Uh, in Australia, we got a platinum at 50,000. Canada, two times platinum, 200,000. New Zealand, 15, platinum, 15,000. United Kingdom, 300,000. And America, a million. That's pretty impressive. So let's have a look at uh, the nuts and bolts of this one. Song quality. Has some good songs on this. Um, still in their early years, still discovering. So I'm going to give song quality four out of five. Production, production was fantastic. Really good sounding album. Okay, there's a couple of tracks that do sound very 80s, but um, you listen to like Planet Earth and uh, Girls on Film. They sound good today as they did in 1981. So I'm going to give it a 5 out of 5 for production. Reception went down well with everybody. Big, big hit. Big album. Um, so I'll give it a reception a 5 out of 5. Cover design. Okay, it's got a picture of the band. It's not a great picture of the band. But at least you can say this. Hello, we're Duran Duran and we're going to have we're going to give you a good album and so I'm going to give cover design a 3 out of 5 so for Duran Duran by Duran Duran gives us a total of 17 so looks like today the winners are Duran Duran um, and I, I think that's a, um, a good reflection really both good albums both albums have got good merit. Duran, uh, you look at Spandau Bally, the writing by Gary Kemp is really good. Strong, very strong. And he was still sort of not really discovered their sound. They went on to do that and became huge. But I think Duran Duran hit the road running. Um, musically, they were brilliant. The songs weren't as good as... Um, Gary Kemp's writing, but again, everything worked out both for both bands, and they are a credit to English, the British music scene, and went on to be big on both sides of the Atlantic, which is pretty good. I mean, at the end of the day, they're good bands, and uh, you know they're two of the strongest bands from the eighties, I think. So, and they went on to be really big, all having number ones and. And they're still going today, which is pretty good. Okay, that's all for this episode. Um, again, if you disagree and you think Spandau Ballet's album's better, 
especially if you're watching this for the first time we do lots of music on this channel we don't just do rock music we do popular music it's not dedicated for head banging but obviously there's a lot of head bangers that like this so I mean I'm, at heart I am an old fashioned head banger I haven't got the air now but uh, I still like my head music head banging music but I do appreciate 80s music a little bit more now so that's all for this episode um, we'll be back later uh, for album artwork where we look at album artwork instead of songs and we are doing rock today we're doing one of my favourite bands we're doing ACDC so join me for that and I will see you later bye